Right, what's up? It's uh, God Mode here. Now, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to look at City Skylines. Uh, I absolutely love this game. I've always been a big fan of this kind of game where you really can sort of build something absolutely massive. Uh, I think it's a massive improvement on the previous cities as well. And actually, it's, I have to admit, it's took me away from SimCity because I believe that this just feels a lot more complete than SimCity is at times. Anyway, what we're looking at here is how to actually manage traffic flow. It possibly one of the biggest issues when I started playing this game is working out how to do traffic flow. Obviously, you get these grand designs in your head, you want to do this, you want to do this, and then you find out that these highways were actually joined to become your biggest burden in the entire game. How to get tons of traffic flowing through that little intersection easily. Now, I picked a map where what we have is two ways into this town. Uh, what we actually want in the future is we want to make sure that when those two roads connect, it's a single continuous highway that doesn't have any any buildings on it, uh, which is you know, probably one of the best ways to actually build a highway, just make sure it flows right through. So here's the plan. I'm going to actually show you how to use a wonderful and typically eccentric British concept of the roundabout. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is this. I'm going to actually create a roundabout at this intersection. Now, I need it to be one way, so I'm just going to upgrade that road there. Now, you want your traffic again to flow in all one direction. And the reason behind that is it really just does improve traffic flow. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it quite large as well, this roundabout. And the reason behind that is actually to space out the junctions. You see, when you've got too many spaces, uh, too little space between your individual junctions, it finds it difficult, your traffic finds it difficult to properly flow around it. Now, uh, what I'm going to do here... Made a mistake there, made that one too short. Is really get this roundabout built up nicely. Okay, so that might seem pretty big, but what you've got to remember now is you've also got a lovely little area here to build industry later on. Remember, industry is best when it's right near the actual motorway. Now, just so you're aware, I've done this one because it's an end, so I've done the roundabout straight off the highway because it's the end of a highway. Were this to actually be, say, a, a highway that cuts through, you would all you would do is you would raise that up and have actual slip roads coming off it. And you want the slip roads to be nice and long and flowing as well so it can fit more traffic between the two points. Okay, so now we've got this nice big oval shaped roundabout to actually get in and in and out of the city. That's going to be where our industry is. So what we need to do is we need to come somewhere else to build the actual village. And to start with, again, roundabouts are so very useful in this. They really are. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to build a roundabout. And I'm going to make it a two-way roundabout, although this is not normally how roundabouts work in typically the UK where I'm from. They really should be one way, but I'm going to start out with by making it um, two way to begin with. I will probably change that to a one way later on. Then what we do is we can pick any of these points to actually branch the roundabout off. And what we can do is we can make these lovely long sleeping curves and we can connect it to whichever one of those we want. Okay. This roundabout, this first roundabout up here, this first village roundabout, um, that's going to be where we actually put our amenities coming off it. We'll put police stations and all sorts coming off that later on. And then I'm just going to very, very quickly do a second part coming off, but I'm not really going to take that anywhere for now. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another one coming off this way. Because what I can do later on is I can put another roundabout here and link these two together to create lots and lots of roundabouts. So, where do the houses go? Well, I actually like to make cul-de-sacs. Make lovely cul-de-sacs so that your village, your actual housing area, 
It looks like a lovely little tree, really. If we get that put in quick, now don't make it too big to fit this stage. And then, here's the clever part. You put your commercial there, just on the outside of the cul-de-sac, and quite often up to the roundabout. Okay. Now, our next thing is obviously to get some plumbing in. So, nice and simple at first. And what we're going to do is we're going to have an outlet, ideally somewhere around here. And early on, just try and keep these two as close together as possible. It will save you a lot of pipe. And it'll also save you a bit of electricity later, as you're going to say. Okay. So, let's plan in our electricity. Now, for now, I'm going to power these two things from a single windmill. And the rest of the city is going to be powered by a, a, a coal power plant just on the outskirts. Again. If you can get these reasonably close together, it's a good idea. And then there's our power. Right. Let's start this now. Let's see how it looks. So, got power and water, and we start building up this little cul de sac. Now, while we're waiting that to grow up, I'll just speed it up a bit. And you'll start to see we get a few. Now, obviously, you can see our money's going down now, so we don't want to speed this up too long. We need to plan the next part of our little town. And again, Use the same basic logic. We've got space here. So again, I start building a nice cul-de-sac. And cul-de-sacs are good for another reason as well. They're great for putting cycle paths between. Actually, each arm of that branch, you can run the cycle paths later on, often, and then you can kind of just link them to the main roads and that'll reduce the overall traffic flow. Again, you know, let's give this one some shopping space so that it's combined. Okay, and this will start to build up now. And we're going to end up with a nice little village at the start of one. And you'll find that as this village gets bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, it'll actually start to have good traffic flow, particularly as we put bigger roundabouts in. Uh, if you want a roundabout that can really have like big buildings on the inner side, which looks really nice, Try and build it with some flat edges as well. As you can see, my town is building up. I'm still running at a loss at the moment, which isn't great. But hopefully that'll start to float back round. Now, I'll just pause it here. As you can see the first demand for industries come in. Of course, what we do is we're just going to put it over here for now. I'm going to put it straight at... The intersection of the motorway and um, the reason behind that is it's just for simplicity you want your traffic from your motorway to flow you want your industries to get right out again start speeding that up a bit i should start to see my industry come in i should see those extra houses building up and you'll start to find that very very quickly with this kind of design you're going to start bridging the gap between your uh, your balance and your outgoings. So I'm still at minus 1000, but it's very rapidly coming up. I've got a good balance. My industries are building as the industries build. I'll need more residential. The residential will grow up. But straight away, as you can see, we've got a nice, tidy little hamlet building up. And it's not going to take that long to develop properly. And there's also a reasonable distance between my actual village and the industry, which will make people happy. Okay, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to let this run really, really quickly and then I'll come back to it when it's all built up a bit more.
Okay, so what I've done is I've just added, as you can see, another little roundabout in here and I've linked them together. That's going to give me a really good flowing traffic around. I've also added a new residential area, building that up. Um, as with everything, I give it a good little bit of commercial zone, just so that they each have it. I see that this roundabout in here is slightly more flat on the edges, so I can put some bigger buildings on the inside later on. If you're curious, obviously, as you can see, I've got already got good traffic flow. I've got very high 94%, and I'm pretty certain that that will continue quite high traffic flow right the way through, even as the city builds up, even as I had new zones. Anyway, so that's it. That's how you get started on building a small village with good traffic flow to begin with that will allow for expansion later on in the game. Uh, pop your thoughts below in the comment section. I'd really love to know what you think of this layout and this design. Uh, as I said, it's very, very British style, I would say, with the cul-de-sacs and the roundabouts on it. Um, but that's how I feel comfortable and that's how I tend to imagine uh, small towns being built up.